Fellow Excel MVP Oz de Soleil came up with an Excel competition along the lines of a popular cooking show called Chopped. Now there are different names for similar shows around the world, but the rules are the same. Chefs are given a mystery box of four ingredients to make a meal from. And the Excel version of this competition is called Excel Hash. And yes, that's an intentional food related pun. The four mystery ingredients we've been given are the max and frequency functions, form controls, and 3D models. And 3D models are new in Office 365. So our task was to come up with an Excel tool that used all four ingredients in an integrated way. We were free to choose the data and we could add spice and flavor with other Excel elements. Okay, too many cooking metaphors. Let's crack on. In my entry, I have a client that has opened a new restaurant called Bug Appetit. It serves a range of reasonably priced meals containing bugs. Now, as you can imagine, they're having a difficult time educating their diners and helping them choose which bugs will be tasty. But thankfully, the restaurant have been keeping a track of their orders and the ratings given for each meal out of 10. You can see them here. 10 being delicious and one being ghastly. Now you can see that the data is stored in an Excel table called orders. And this means I can reference it using the table's structured references instead of cell references. And if you're not familiar with tables and structured references, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I was thinking I could use this data to create an interactive menu that provided the rating information to help people make choices based on past diners feedback, much like Amazon do with their star rating system for products. So on the menu after, this is my end result, one I prepared earlier. And here I've shown the maximum rating for each item, plus I've grouped the ratings into bands, one to two, three to four, five to six, and so on. And I use the frequency function to make those five groups. I've used spark lines to show the size of the groups at a glance. So for example, here we can see Mozzie Minestrone has been given a maximum rating of nine. Plus, we can see from the frequency distribution that the majority of ratings are nine. So our diners can be confident that this is more likely to be on the delicious end of the scale rather than ghastly. Whereas the stink bug salad has also been given a maximum rating of nine, but the majority of people rate it a three or four. So there's probably one crazy person who liked it, but most people think it's below average. Now, I've also provided a 3D model of the bug and I've used form controls to allow the diners to have a closer look at what they're considering from all angles. In hindsight, this may turn out to be a mistake, but we're going with it for now. Plus, it satisfies the requirement of including 3D models in the solution. Okay, if you'd like to see how the different elements work, keep watching and I'll step through it. So on the data sheet, it's going to unhide these columns. I've got a table here that I want to populate with the frequency distribution. Let's just resize some of these to make it a bit clearer. So we're going to populate the frequency distribution here and then we'll find the maximum rating for each item on the menu. Now first I just want to explain how frequency works in this small table here. Now the frequency function counts how often values, in this case ratings, occur in a range specified by the bins. It returns a vertical array of the frequency of each value and the bins reflect the upper limit of the ratings I want to count. For example, the first bin will count ratings 1 and 2, the second bin counts 3 and 4 and so on. Now frequency is a multi-cell array formula so I need to select all the cells that I want to populate frequency in first and then we'll start writing the formula. So frequency, the data array well, this is my orders table and the rating column. So because I've got this in an Excel table, I can just type in the table name, open a square bracket, and I can arrow down to the item I want and press tab, or I could type it in. So that's my data array, the ratings. And then my bins array are these cells here. And I just close parentheses. And because this is an array formula, I need to press Control, Shift, and Enter to complete it. So you can see that is the frequency of each rating. So ratings one and two, there are 18. 
ratings 3 and 4 there are 62 and if I highlight all of them we can see down the bottom we have 218 ratings altogether. But in my table I don't want to count all of the ratings 1 and 2. For example in this row here I just want to count the ratings for Mozzie Minestrone and I want my array to go across the row rather than in a vertical array I want a horizontal array returned. So we have to get a bit clever about how we write this formula and I'm going to use transpose to convert it from a vertical array to a horizontal array and I'll use if to set some criteria on which ratings are returned for each row. So let's build it. We need transpose first so we're going to wrap the whole formula in transpose and then frequency. Now the data array, well we want the ratings but only if they're for the menu item for this row which is mozzie minestrone. So let's start with if and again we're using the structured references. So if the menu item equals this one here and let me just absolute the column reference on that. If the menu item is mozzie minestrone then return the orders ratings for mozzie minestrone and we'll close our parentheses on if and then we need to tell it the bins array well they're those cells up here so let's just absolute that reference because we're going to copy this formula down so I can close my frequency function now I need to close transpose and control shift and enter but what I forgot to do is select all of the cells I need so I'm just going to select them press F2 to edit and then control shift and enter and it will enter that formula across the row so basically all we need to do now is copy it down and we have 218 ratings returned but they're split across the different menu items and the reason we want to transpose it is so that we can use spark lines to give a visual indicator of the rating distribution so let me insert those on the insert tab we're going to go with column and the data range is here and I've already selected the location range because I had those cells selected first so I just click OK and now we can visually see the rating distribution. So now all I need to do is find the max rating but I only want the max rating in this cell for Mozzie Minestrone and in this cell I only want the max rating for ro Roasted Locusts. So I need to get a bit clever and I could use max ifs because I have Excel for Office 365 which is similar to Excel 2016 and in that version of Excel we have a new function called max ifs which allows us to specify criteria but the rules of this competition are I have to use the max function so we're going to have to go a bit old school and we'll do a nested max if formula instead so here my logical test is if my orders menu item equals the menu item on this row then return the orders the max of the orders rating so we'll close the parentheses on if and we'll close it on max and control shift and enter because this is an array formula and I've got my max rating let me just copy the formula down so we can see the max ratings we've got our frequency distribution and our spark lines now we don't need the spark lines on this sheet I just wanted to show the relationship with the spark line and the rating frequency what we need to do is actually populate our menu so I've got one here that's ready to go and we'll start to populate it so all I need to do is reference the data tab return the max rating and I can copy that down the frequency rating this is where I'm going to insert my spark lines so let's go ahead and the data range for the spark lines are here so we'll do the first three because they're in groups on the menu let's give our spark lines a better color so we'll go with this sort of orangey color and then I'll rinse and repeat for the rest of the items in the menu but for now I want to move on to the bugs now Office 365 users will find the 3D models on the insert tab under illustrations and then 3D models and we have a choice we can get them from a file we have locally or we can grab them from some online sources so let's just take a look at what's available so there's a quite a few different 3D models to choose from 
Mine are in the bug section, so let's take a look. So to select an, a 3D model, just left click on the ones that you want and then press insert. Now I'm not going to do it here because I already have them in my file. Now word of warning on 3D models, they have the potential to make your file size blow out. For example, my file is 200 megabytes and I only have 10 3D models in there. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to cancel because I've shown you how to grab them and I'll go to my menu after here and I'll just copy them. But in order to make it easy to select them, I'm just going to turn on select objects. And let's zoom out a little bit to make the bugs smaller. So with my select objects on, all I need to do is make sure I select all of the object. And you can see I've obviously not selected the spider enough. It's wider than all of the others. So with them all selected, I'm going to control C to copy. And then let's just paste them into the demo sheet. And I'll just move them into place. That looks good. All right, let's turn off the select objects so I can use Excel normally. The great thing about 3D models is the ability to select them and then you can rotate them to get a look at them from a different angle. And if we go up to the format pane, we can turn on the zoom and pan, which allows us to make them bigger and smaller. However, these options aren't obvious to users. So I'm going to add some form control buttons that allow the user to click and rotate the models. And to help with this, I've given all of my models a name. If we open the selection pane here, you can see each one has a name. And if I click on it, it selects the object. And I can reference these objects with these names rather than their generic names. To rename them, you just click left click on them twice and then you can type in a new name and press enter. So the next thing to do is add some buttons for the user to click to rotate these models. These are found on the developer tab in the insert group and then form controls. Now if you don't see the developer tab in your version of Excel, just right click on the ribbon, customize ribbon, and then make sure the developer option here in the right hand pane is selected. So developer tab and then insert and then we have all these different types of controls. Now mine are just buttons. So let me grab the button and you can see my cursor changes. It's changed so that I can draw the button in and you just left click and drag to draw the button. Now it is expecting a macro to be assigned to it, but first I want to show you those macros. So I'm going to just cancel there. Let's edit the button or we'll edit the text and I'm going to insert a symbol that is just a downward triangle. So I've got some here in my recently used. I'm just going to double click and close. That's inserted the symbol. And now my button isn't going to do anything until I assign a macro to it. So let's just talk through the macro. It's fairly straightforward. I'll open the Visual Basic Editor. At the top, we've declared a constant, which is 20 degrees. So every time the macro button is clicked, it's going to rotate the 3D model by 20 degrees. So obviously I could change this 20 value to 60 if I wanted to rotate it more or maybe five if I wanted to rotate it less with each click. Then we have a separate macro for each button and there are two buttons for each 3D model, one for up and down and one for left and right. Well, actually it's down and then right. So the first macro here specifies that with each click of the button, it will rotate the object called Mozzie on the active sheet 20 degrees on its Y axis. And after each rotation, it deselects the 3D model object by selecting cell A6. And once I had this first code written, I just copied it and I changed the name. So this is called Rotate Mozzie up down. This one's Rotate Mozzie left right. I didn't need to change the name of the object because it's the same one. It's just going up and down. I needed to change the rotation to X and that was it. So once I had a pair for each object, one for my up down button, one for my left right button, I could copy those and paste them and then just change the name. So this is the locust and change the object name and then locust up down and object name locust. So I just rinsed and repeated. You can see the code is really straightforward. So we go back to our Excel workbook. 
I can right click the form control, assign macro, and all I need to do is find the macro for rotating the mozzie up down. So this is the down button effectively and I click OK. So now when I click on this button my mozzie rotates 20 degrees on its X axis. So I need to repeat that. Let's just make this button a little bit smaller and we'll move it up. So let's insert one more button for the left right and roughly in here and all I need to do is find mozzie left right double click to assign the macro let's change the the text so that it's a an arrow and we'll just use this triangle double click close and now a button is assigned to the mozzie so all we need to do is rinse and repeat those buttons for each 3D model assigning the appropriate macro. Now if I go back to the menu after, this is the one I prepared earlier, you can see I've got a button up here for reset and that returns the bugs to their original position. Unfortunately the way Excel handles the rotation of models in VBA is a bit flaky. Let me show you the VBA code for that reset button. It's at the bottom here. You can see Instead of being able to list an array and just set the rotation, I've had to specify each 3D model separately. It just wasn't performing the way it should when I had them in one line of code. So the code isn't very elegant for these 3D models, but it works and um, I think our diners will love to be able to interact with our menu and see exactly what they're eating. I also considered adding a button to let customers zoom in on the bugs, but we don't want to completely freak them out, so I've omitted that for now. Now I know you might be thinking that it's intentional that my solution is food related, but this was actually my fifth idea and I stumbled upon it after reading an article about how we should eat more bugs because breeding them has a low environmental impact. And it got me thinking about how hard it would be to convince people that bugs were tasty. And then I remembered the 3D bug models in Excel and the idea for the interactive menu was born. Of course, these techniques could be applied to many scenarios. For example, they might also be used for a product catalog for support or sales staff where providing a 3D model of an object alongside some statistical information would be useful. Well, that wraps up my Excel hash entry. If you liked it, please vote for me. You can use the QR code or click the link to go to the voting form. And be sure to watch the episodes by my fellow Excel MVPs and subscribe to each channel because they're all awesome. Thanks for watching.